Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose f is a function from a to b. If f is bijective, then the inverse of f is a function from b to a. Okay, so first of all, what does it mean for a function to be bijective? Well, if you recall, all that means is that our function f is both injective and surjective. What does it mean for f to be injective? Well, if you recall, all that means is that for every two elements, a1 and a2 in a, if f of a1 equals f of a2, then a1 equals a2. And next, what does it mean for f to be surjective? Well, if you recall, all that means is for every element of b in b, there is an element a in a such that b equals f of a. Okay, and also, what is the inverse of f? Well, really, if we recall, functions are also relations. So if we consider our relation f and the inverse relation f inverse, if we recall, the way that these two are related is that f inverse is all ordered pairs in f with the coordinates swapped. So really, to say that x comma y is an element of f is equivalent to saying that y comma x is an element of f inverse for any ordered pair. Okay, so now let's get into the proof. Let's suppose that we've already declared our function f from a to b. And so our goal now is to prove if this is true, then this is true. So let's suppose this is true. And our whole goal is to deduce that f inverse is a function from b to a. What does this mean? It means that for every element b in b, there is a unique element a in a, such that b comma a is an element of f inverse. So really, this is the statement we're trying to prove. And we're trying to prove a statement about every element in b. So give me an arbitrary element of b. I'll call it b. Now, because f is bijective, we know one of the things that means is that f is surjective, which means we know for a fact that this second statement is true. And this statement works for every element in b. So it must work for the b that we have in our proof. So really, we can choose some element a in a such that b equals f of a. Now, we know that this is equivalent to saying that a comma b is an element of f. And also, from inverses of relations, we know that this is equivalent to if we swap the order of a and b and write that b comma a is an element of f inverse. And so at this point, notice that we have found an element a in a such that b comma a is an element of f inverse. So this proves existence. But now we want to prove that the element a that we found is unique. That is, we want to prove that a is the only element in a that satisfies this condition. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to prove that every element in a that satisfies this condition is equal to a. So to do that, Give me an arbitrary element in A that satisfies this condition. I'll call it A prime. And so to prove uniqueness, what we want to do is we want to prove that A prime is equal to A. Okay, so to start, we know that this, from inverses of relations, is equivalent to if we swap the order of B and A prime and write that A prime comma B is an element of F. And since f is a function, we know that this is equivalent to saying b equals f of a prime. But wait a minute, we also know that b equals f of a. So this means that f of a is equal to f of a prime. And now, because f is bijective, we know that that means f is injective. 
which means we know that this first statement is true. And this statement works for every two elements in A. Well, because A and A prime are both elements of A, that means this statement works for A and A prime. So we can take A1 substitute it for A, A2 substitute it for A prime, and we get that if f of a equals f of a prime, then a equals a prime. Well, we just showed that f of a is equal to f of a prime. So this means that a equals a prime. And so this proves uniqueness, right? The reason why is because we show that if we pick out an arbitrary element in a that satisfies the same condition that a does, then that element must be equal to A. So A uniquely satisfies this condition. So really, we've proven that there is a unique element A in A such that B comma A is an element of F inverse. But also, because B was arbitrary, that means for every element of B in B, we know for a fact that this is true, which means we've proven exactly this statement, which means we've proven that F inverse is a function from B to A. And so this completes the proof. And so, yeah, that is pretty much one way in which you could prove this theorem. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.